Good, good. I'm Paul Cox, and I'm a parent. Wait. Got some parents in. There are two things you need to know about being a successful parent. I don't know what either of them are. <laughs> but if I had to guess, I'd say the iPad and cow pole. Because <laughs> that's what works best for me. My parents are beautiful eight-year-old girl, and because I am, the nativity play is still part of my world. And what I've learned about the nativity play, ladies and gentlemen, is that primary school teachers have started to rewrite it. I know this because last year, my daughter played Jesus is Nan. <laughs> Thank you. Jesus is Nan. It was unclear which one. Could be one of three, I guess. I have not read the book all the way through. She only had one line. I never did like the bloody Romans. Turns out it's not just my nan that's racist. <laughs> my, uh, my daughter's actually growing up in a lovely middle class street, but I grew up on a council estate. Do we all know what a council estate is? Yeah. Great. I loved growing up on a council estate. I loved growing up on a council estate because there was twice as many kids to play with, but only half as many parents to keep an eye on us. <laughs> But having grown up on a council estate and now living in what some would call a nice middle class area, I have learned the difference between working and middle class. And it's cheese. Oh, it's cheese, trust me. The middle classes love their cheese. Cheese, 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 cheese. If you can milk it, they'll fucking cheese it. <laughs> Working class have only got two cheese. String and squeezy. That's all you need. Give you some idea of the specific area I grew up in. My mate Steve, his auntie was two years below us at school. <laughs> that's not his sister, that's his auntie. Now I have stood in front of many an audience who don't think that's particularly weird, but trust me, if you're 10 years old, you stood in the playground with your little mate Steve, someone comes running up going, Steve, you're only taking a in the sand pit again <laughs> then it's fucking weird but uh, I actually grew up in Portsmouth thank you <laughs> no no I've never been anywhere where anyone's proud of that but I think I might have a story that will change your mind Portsmouth is the only place that I have seen someone take a shit in a drawer <laughs> and then get up and continue to teach the class Told you. <laughs> Pay it a visit. But they'll say, won't they? They'll say that it's your background, it's your class structure that will determine how you will discipline your children. By which they're trying to tell you that you're much more likely to hit your kids if you're working class than if you're middle class. Now, I don't agree with this. I don't agree with this at all. I mean, my dad did hit me, and my dad is working class. But he didn't hit me because he's shit at Latin. <laughs> He hit me because I told him he's shit at Latin. <laughs> In Latin. <laughs> now, my daughter's got no such fear of me, no such fear of me whatsoever. My wife was trying to feed her a lovely, nutritious meal recently. She pushed it away. She said, I want it! I want cake! I want cake! My missus was pulling her hair out. She said, you wait till your dad gets home. My daughter looked up and went, why? Has he got cake? <laughs> That's middle class kids for you. I'm a busy guy in Liverpool. I do this four or five nights of the week and because I'm so busy, I'm often forgetting things. And just last night, I forgot to take my contact lenses out. So when I woke up this morning, my contact lenses were still in. What a wanker. <laughs> I spent the first five minutes of my day genuinely believing my eyesight had been healed by God. <laughs> to let the pill those fuckers out. But that's not the most embarrassing thing. The most embarrassing thing is when I spent 20 minutes, 20 minutes no less, chasing a daddy long legs around my bedroom until I realised I had a crack in my fucking glasses. <laughs> now our 
arguably, after all that running about, I should not be this fat. That's <laughs> no, all right to laugh. I've got mirrors. It don't matter. I tried to do something about it. I thought about buying myself one of those Fitbits. But I decided very quickly I don't need a 200 pound watch to tell me to eat less and move more. I need one that goes around my throat and starts choking me and getting two bags of fucking donuts. <laughs> but having stood in front of beautiful people like you all the time, it does get me thinking about my body image. And I started thinking recently because I was at one particular gig down south and there was a young lady young lady in the second row who just kept singing Simply Red songs at me. <laughs> I didn't know why either. <laughs> I had a choice at this point. I could either get her involved or ignore her and trust me, this lady was not to be ignored. So I leant into the second row to pass her the microphone. And in doing so, I ripped my hamstring. <laughs> now, I fully ripped my hamstring. Now, have you any idea how fat and unfit you got to be to pull your hamstring doing stand-up comedy. <laughs> so I'm on a diet. I'm 38 now. I know that's not particularly old. I feel like I'm getting a little bit older, but I definitely feel like I'm losing my sexual attractiveness. <laughs> oh my God. No? All right. Well, my wife feels the same way as she does. <laughs> I mean, I'm out five or six nights of the week and she could not give a fuck where I am. <laughs> it has got to the point now where if my wife was to find a bra in my car, she would just assume I've been jogging. <laughs> now, just to be clear, that is a joke about me having moobs. That is not a joke about how cool my wife is with me being a serial killer. <laughs> Apparently, is an easy mistake to make. <coughs> dear, oh dear. But, uh, yeah, my sister got married last year. Yay. Thanks. Not to me. <laughs> I said Portsmouth, not Southampton. <laughs> but it was a big day in her world, as you can imagine, largely because she was changing her surname from Cox to Blakey, which is a big day in any woman's world, trust me. And naturally, my dad did a speech. I say naturally, ladies and gentlemen, my dad at his only daughter's wedding stood up and started his speech with this. He said, you may take my daughter out of the cocks. <laughs> I can't finish it. Neither should my dad. That's my sister. But my sister had a baby last year as well because it's tradition in our family uh, to get married if you're pregnant. <laughs> and it got me thinking, why do we introduce babies the way that we do? Don't introduce anybody else this way, do we? I've never, for example, walked into a room and said, hi, it's my new girlfriend, Julie. Nine stone, two pounds. <laughs> <laughs> you can hold her if you like. She starts crying, give her a bottle of fucking wine. <laughs> I've got to leave you shortly, but I'll leave you with this. Are you having a good time? Yeah. Fucking right you are. <laughs> Fuck. It's like 11 o'clock on a Sunday night. You lot are fucking mental. <laughs> but well done. You're doing really well. Um, yeah, I do a lot of travel with this job, largely on the transport network. And the problem with public transport is the public use it. Okay, and the worst thing to happen to me on a train was when I woke up to a blowjob. I know. Jammy fucker. <laughs> Jammy fucker. It wasn't even first class, mate. <laughs> and I thought to myself there, and that is the last time I fall asleep on the train with my mouth open. <laughs> I've been Paul Cox, enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you, Liverpool. Yeah.